I want to talk about now is actually introducing Candace J. She makes the most incredible projects and she is really good about actually sending us girlfriend gifts. She'll mm -hmm. send little surprise packages, which it's is so, so wonderful because you're not expecting anything. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden this little package comes and it has all of her little handmade beads or her polymer clay mm -hmm. chocolates or something that she's handmade. And she truly epitomizes the girlfriend mm -hmm. theme with everything that she does. Yes, she does. Candace, what are you up to today? Thank you, ladies. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my studio. Come on in and set a spell. Let's talk about chocolate. You know, this is one of my favorite topics, and my best friend happens to love chocolate as much as I do. So I'm making her a gift of eternal chocolates, and I'm going to show you how to. Sit back and relax, because here we go. Before we talk about some of the techniques, I'd like to show you a box that I have in progress. It's um, polymer clay chocolates, just like the one I'm going to show you, and I did polymer clay tiles. Now when this sits in its frame, you'll be able to see the word friends on the side. It still needs a little bit of finish and trim, but I think it's going to be a pretty nice box. This box holds three chocolates, and a week after Valentine's Day, it costs like a buck fifty. So I bought everything that they had left over, dumped all the chocolates out. Okay, I ate them, but I saved a lot of them and they're so much fun to decorate. You can see I've already covered the top because I'm gonna do a tile mosaic on the front and if any of it shows through, I don't want it to be the red foil that's there. And I also went around the white part on the base with a brown felt pen, but you can paint too. That's, uh, that works just fine. You don't normally have to worry about the bottom because that should not show. The first technique I want to show you is stamping on the polymer clay. And I have an archival ink. It's uh, a sepia color. And I have this lovely design. A whole box takes several hours to make, so that's why I'm only going to show you some of the techniques. Now it's okay if it misses in some places because I have smaller stamps I can go back with to get them. And I'm not just stamping the ink on, I'm also stamping a little bit of texture into it as well. This is my little spiral stamper. It fills in the spots nicely. And it's okay if it overlaps a little bit. Okay, I think we're ready to cut. I have small square tile cutters that I use, actually cookie cutters, but I use them to cut tiles. And what I'll do is cut several of them in each color and then I'm going to lay them out in a checkerboard pattern and then I'm going to show you how to cut the top by laying the box on it. Here are the tiles laid out and ready to cut and I put this template over it and moved it around to see what angle I liked best. And I think this is where I want to be, right here. So you're going to lay out your tiles. You're going to give it a little bit of a squish because you want it to stay on there while you're cutting. And use a craft knife with just a little bit of pressure and go all the way around. You can cut more perfectly after you're done. If you try to drag it through though, you're going to pull the tiles out of place. Here it is, all together the way it's supposed to look. And now before I bake these, I'm going to cut some half tiles. So I'm going to line them up. And you can see some of them are not perfect. That doesn't matter. 
and I'm going to cut them about in half. And that's because when you put your tiles on the sides, the wider tiles, the full square, they stick out. So the shorter ones lay down very nicely. Before I go to bake, I have one more thing to show you. And that is how I make the chocolates. This is just a piece of foil and to compact it and shape it, I have rolled it, rolled it all over the place and I used a tool to give it that separation. And after you're done making your molds, you want to clean your surface really well because this will leave black on your fingers and your surface and you don't want to accidentally mar your tiles. So I conditioned this one little piece about the size of a gumball. Now you can roll out the clay that's going to go over this, but it's not necessary because this will just fold down all the way around. And if it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, that's okay because that never shows. These will be glued into place. So you can see I've started the shape and then I'm going to roll it to get it smooth. If I want to give it any texture, I can do that now. And they will go into bake according to the directions on your clay. And then we'll see what happens with the box. As you can see, everything's finished baking. And I'm going to add a little more depth to the tiles with my archival ink and a little dabber thing that you can almost paint with on these. Now it stayed together so I just left it that way and I'm just going to work around the edges. I'm going to be using Aline's paper glaze for my dimensional glue and I'm going to do it as if they were individual tiles. So I'm going to go right up to the edge as I'm putting it on and then fill in the center. You can even do it on the really tiny ones. The last part is framing. This is an 8x8 dimensional frame. You can almost always find these on sale at Michael's. Now, I have finished up this box with a paper trim with gems and some brown yarn. I like the look of a top and bottom finish. And usually that'll go there on that side. And then I did a simple twisted wire heart and small gems. I put three accent gems on the lid here and you can see how beautiful the finish came out. And I also added the same paper trim and yarn to this one. So find a way to set these where the person looking at it will be able to see like that. When it's hanging on a wall, that's what you'll see. So just make it even on both sides and top to bottom. That needs to come up a little bit and glue it into place with one of the tacky glues. Now you want to go try one, don't you? Of course you do. It's chocolate. Who does not want to give or get chocolates that last forever? I hope that you are inspired to try something like this, and I hope that if you do, I get to see it. You can email me at CandaceAtCoolToCraft.com anytime with any photos and stories so I can share them. Stay crafty, my friends. Back to you, Tiffany and Heidi. I just love everything that Candace does. I do too. I'm she's so glad she's our girlfriend. She's so special. She is. You know, you never know how you're going to meet a special friend who becomes a girlfriend. 
I met Candace when I was at living on the East Coast at my sister Candace's store. The other, the other sister. And so Candace J, that's why she became Candace J, because mm -hmm. we have Candace, our sister, and Candace J. And she came into the store. She had been a customer of Candace's for quite a while. And we had some women's get togethers. Mm -hmm. And I had the chance to craft with her. She did a fabulous polymer clay class that where I fetish. made the fetishes, mm -hmm. the little um, bear fetish. Mm -hmm. And I got to know her. She ended up moving away to Utah. Mm -hmm. And thankfully with the internet and Skype and being able to video the show, we can work on different coasts no matter where we are. Mm -hmm. And we have become friends and I just adore you, Candace. Yeah, <laughs> she's very special.